All right, the day has come. We're gonna throw this front axle back together. Finally got all my parts, got the FJ80 high pinion, third member. So I'm gonna get going on this, see if we can't get this thing back together. So these are just, these are simple to put in. You just get the gasket on it, make sure the surfaces are all cleaned up. And then it just drops in. Just like that, and then throw throw all the washers and nuts on. So next we gotta pack the axle shaft with grease, just use some wheel bearing grease. So stick it up like that and just get as much grease in this joint as you can. So kind of turn it like that, shove some in this side. That should be should be enough grease there. So once you move it around, you don't want um, like you, you can see everything up here is packed full of grease. So just just keep smashing in there until you're confident that the inside of this joint is got is packed full of grease. So so we'll do that to the next one, and then we can throw these in the housing. All right, so now what we're gonna do is get the get that knuckle on. So we gotta set the bearing preload. So what you wanna do is get your bearings and just put a little bit of grease on them for now. Later on, we'll pull them back out and completely pack them full. But for now, just put some grease on it. And for the shimming, um, I'm gonna. You just gotta start anywhere and see where it's at, and then adjust from there. So I got it's about I think it was 0.75 millimeters thickness on top and bottom. So you want to keep you want to keep uh, the same amount of shimming on the top and the bottom to keep everything centered. So get your shims on um, the bottom cap. You can stick the bearing in there and then just kind of set the bearing on that stud. Like that. Stick the bottom in first into that race. And then put a nut on it to hold it on. Take your shims for the top, make sure there's nothing on them. Take your steering arm. And you want to tighten these up pretty tight. The torque spec's like 74 foot pounds, I think. So when you're setting your preload, you want to be close to that at least. Once 
get that tight, rotate it, make sure everything's set. And then what I use to check the preload, so you take a fish scale and you hook it in the steering arm and you pull it and you want 7 to f to 12 I believe, 7 to 12 pounds to get the steering to move. So let's see what this is now. Okay, that showed 15. Which, if you're running larger tires, you can run a little higher. Some people do run 15. So I'm just going to move this back and forth and then check it again. Sometimes it'll loosen up a little bit. But I'm, I'm happy with 15 because I'm going to be running 35s on wider wheels. So I'll probably want a little bit more preload anyway. So yeah, we're at about 15, so I'm going to call it good there. So now I'm going to take it all back apart and pack those bearings with grease, get the felt and the seals and everything on the back side, and then we can get it installed and torqued down. So what we have to get on the back side, we have the felt, there's a rubber gasket, and a metal ring, and then these two half moons. You can put these on last, obviously, the bolts go through that. So first we want to get we want to get this felt on. So I found it easiest to start put one edge in here and then kind of fold this edge around and go very slow and make sure this size stays <clears throat> deep in that groove and you have just enough room to get it around. Just go slow, you don't want to rip it. So leave those like that. And we're gonna pack those uh, knuckle bearings. Let's get some gloves on. It's a little bit messy. Grab your knuckle, stick that cap on the bottom, and grab your bearing. Make sure it's the right way. You want the taper up. Stick it on the cap. And then slide it on bottom first again. Make sure your shims are in there, obviously. And then get a nut on the bottom so it doesn't fall off. Then grab your upper arm. Same thing, make sure you got the shims. Wiggle it a little bit. So, if you remember, the top uses cone washers, and I didn't paint anything inside of here. So, I'm going to put a little bit, just a dab of grease on these cone washers just so they don't get rusted in there. So do that on all four. There's no cone washes on the bottom, just on the top side. All right, now we can torque. <coughs> These nuts, they are, let me get my cheat sheet, 71. 
So we'll torque the top and bottom 71 foot pounds. Give it a turn, make sure it's smooth and tight. And then we can get this back buttoned up here. So have your have your rear rings ready and a, a bolt. So this ring sits inside of this groove. So set that in there. And it's usually a pretty tight fit so you might have to grab just something a little screwdriver to kind of get that all the way seated in there Go around the whole thing. Get it seated. And take your rubber. Your rubber also sits inside that groove. So get the rubber in like that. This felt has flat spots on the top and the bottom. So line those up with the holes trying to keep that rubber in place and you gotta hold everything while you're doing this and get your top plate get that on get it through the hole in the felt and then get it started into the knuckle I'd get a couple in there just to keep, try to keep that rubber in place so it likes to pop out. It'd be kind of tough to get everything lined up. Alright, we got two in there. Let's get the bottom one on now. Same thing. So one thing I noticed <clears throat> when I was turning this after I got everything on the back side I could feel the uh, it felt like the rubber was catching so I pulled it back apart and it was folding on the edge so when I was turning it would grab onto the knuckle or on the ball of the housing and it would catch and fold so I took it all apart and just smeared a little bit of grease on this housing and now it's good to go. So that's something else you can do. Just take a little little bit of grease and smear it on the ball of the housing so that that rubber seal doesn't catch on it. And now we're good. So next thing we're going to do is throw the axle shaft in. Let me go grab it. So there's the flat spots in the shaft that have to stay up on the up and down position. So there's little cutouts in the, the little flat spots in the housing and be careful going through that seal kind of hold that shaft up once you get close you can't really get your hand in there and then you just kind of got to wiggle it around and turn it to get it engaged in that third member it can take a little bit of doing all right there we go
and you gotta kind of spin that pinion a little bit and that's all the way in so next we're gonna pack the knuckle with grease so let me get my gloves and get everything set up and I'll show you guys what to do there all right so what you want to do is you don't you don't want too much grease in here because um, it can when everything heats up and expands it can actually push grease out of the easiest spot which is the back on the felts so you don't want too much grease so I go around between the knuckle and the housing ball and I get get some in there and mainly get it around the bearings on the top and the bottom get it on the bearings and then shove some in around this axle shaft and you just want to leave some room you don't you don't really need that much grease I mean it does take a lot but if you put too much in there it can hurt so I start by the bearings just get it shoved in there that's the main the main uh, part that needs grease in here obviously the axle which we already packed and these steering bearings so just go around and shove the grease up in there so what you have is there's two gaskets there's the main seal on the outside and then this is I'm not running the backing plates um, so this is a backing plate eliminator so what you do is you get this gasket here with the with the flat spots in it sits on the spindle get the spindle on and try to get it as close to lined up as you can get it set on there and then you throw your backing plate on in my case it's the adapter the eliminator so there's an up you stick that up obviously common sense and then you take your seal and your gasket I put this down, this cut out, I'm not sure exactly what it's for, but there's also an up on the seal. So I take your bolt, and you got to get everything aligned. So just kind of wiggle it back and forth so you can get a thread in. There we go. So uh, this is 38 foot pounds. So get your torque wrench out. It's a 14 millimeter. And then just go around. Make sure everything moves free, and then we can get the um, the whole hub assembly on. And so before you forget, what I always do is come around and put a little uh, grease in this seal here. So the last thing you want is that seal folding when you put the. Uh, when you put the hub on, Let's get a little grease on that, and then I'll show you guys the process of getting that hub, getting the wheel bearings preset or preloaded, and all that good stuff.